We're not talking about punching a time clock and working nine to five. We're talking about working around the clock, rain or shine, hot or cold, because crops and animals won't wait. Jimmy knows all about it because he lives it. And Jimmy knows what you're going through because he goes through it too. He's here to talk about it. It's seed and feed, chemicals and compost, vaccinations and irrigation. It's time for Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Hey, good day to all you great stewards of the land. It is the day in Ag with Jimmy Clark, brought to you by the First National Bank and Trust of Sayre in Elk City, Oklahoma. Great show on tab for today. Uh, Joe Merrick will be on here in just about uh, 10, 15 minutes, and then him and I are going to be talking with Boots O'Neill from the Four Sixes Ranch. It's going to be a great day. I'm excited. Uh, anyway, so it's fun. If you guys ain't got your cows fed yet, you need to hurry up because it's getting ready to get muddy again. It's knocking at the door to state line from what I can see on the radar. Also, up there in part of our listening area in the Oklahoma Panhandle, you guys are under a uh, winter storm warning. Uh, it is snowing like crazy in Seminole County from what I heard. Uh, I have a friend that lives in Raton, and they've already got three foot of snow and he said he had a buddy down by Las Vegas that already had 44 inches of snow. And then I got this buddy from Elk City that thought he should travel to Colorado, I guess going elk hunting or whatever. Uh, they left this morning. They're not even going to make it to Santa Fe, I don't think. So anyway, be careful out there, everybody, whether it's rain or snow, the roads are going to get muddy slick. Where there's asphalt, the wind's going to be blowing a little bit up in the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma. So, lots of weather coming on. Uh, they're still forecasting three to four inches in western Oklahoma and the eastern Texas panhandle. And just east of here, along I-40 around uh, Hydro and in that area, six inches of rain's possible. So, get the sandbags out. Get ready. Uh, it's time for that. Big shout out. I really don't know how to pronounce how he puts his name on uh, Snapchat, but I'm going to go for it. Sketchly Baker, I want to shout out to you and your grandpa riding around out there in the farm truck, Mr. Mike Baker. Anyway, hello. You guys be careful out there and enjoy the moisture that is coming. All right, let's see what happened overnight. Well, let's check some temperatures out first. Sorry. 63 degrees at Altus, 58 at Hollis, 53 at Cheyenne, home of the secret weapon. 55 at Arnett, same at Woodward, May Ranch, you're 55, 47 at Hooker, 32 at Boy City. Out here in the panhandle of Texas, 53 degrees at Lipscomb, Miami's 51, 53 at Dozer, 63 at Odell. What's that right up? Oh, text line right up there in the corner on the way to Raton. Uh, it's 30 degrees out there. So, man, quite a drastic change. It's it's late fall. Winter's here. So, anyway, bring it on. I don't think we're supposed to get any snow or anything like that, but it might cool down a little bit. So, we'll see what's happening. Okay. Let's see what happened overnight. Since we're two days past the election, see if things have calmed down a little bit. Grain and soybean futures were higher in overnight trading amidst ongoing demand for U.S. ag products. Overseas buyers have committed to purchase 26.3 million metric tons of soybeans since the start of the 24-25 marketing year on September 1st, up 13% from the same time frame last year, according to data from the USDA. Corn sales since the beginning of September are now at 25.8 million tons. That's up. 41% year over year. Wheat sales since the start of the grain marketing year on June 1st now stands at 13.6 million tons. That's a 19% increase from the same period last year. Exporters sold 124 million, 124,000 metric tons of corn to a John Doe country for delivery in 24-25 marketing year, the, the USDA said in a statement yesterday. Or Tuesday, I'm sorry. USDA on Monday reported sales of 150,000 tons of corn to Mexico, 120,000 tons of corn to John Doe country, 
132,000 tons of soybeans to a John Doe country. On Friday, sales to China, India, Mexico, and other countries were reported. Corn futures for December delivery rose one penny overnight to 4.27 and a quarter a bushel on the Chicago Board of Trade. Wheat futures for December delivery added four cents to 5.77 and a quarter a bushel, and Kansas City futures gained two and a quarter to 5.76 and a quarter a bushel. Soybean futures for January delivery rose seven and three quarter cents to ten and four. Ten dollars, eleven and a half cents a bushel, and soy meal was up two sixty to three oh one a short ton, and soy oil fell point two one cents to forty six point one three cents a, a pound. Looks like ethanol output jumped to the highest level in more than three months last week, and inventories gained. Uh, production rose to an average of one point one zero five million barrels a day. That's up from one point zero eight last week uh, in the Midwest. Of course, they're the largest producer. Uh, output surged to an average of 1.42, I'm sorry, 1.042 million barrels, and that's up from 1.02 million a week earlier. Gulf Coast production was up 20, uh, to 26,000. That's up from 23,000 the pre previous week. And Rocky Mountain was up by 1,000 barrels to 15,000 a day. How about that? All right. This is your weather according to the National Weather Service. Winter storm warnings and watches and weather advisories have been issued for counties in the Southern Plains where a hard red winter wheat is growing, according to the National Weather Service. Counties in extreme western Kansas and the Oklahoma and Texas plan handles the eastern half of Colorado and almost all of New Mexico are facing winter weather through Saturday, according to them. As much as two feet of snow is expected uh, in Colorado, which sits on the uh, county, what is that, Los Animas County in Colorado, which sits on the northern border of New Mexico and touches the Oklahoma Panhandle. Intense winds are also forecast with gusts up to 35. In the Texas Panhandle, up to an inch of snow and ice are projected today and tonight, along with winds. Uh, forecast to go as strong as 35 miles an hour. Roads and especially bridges and overpasses will become slick and hazardous. In central Oklahoma and north Texas, meanwhile, flood watches are in effect. Amid excessive rain that is expected to fall in the area, some areas will receive up to four inches. And I did look at that, just so you guys know. Ellis Woodward, Major, Roger Mills, Dewey, Blaine, Custer, Beckham, Worstall, Caddo, Greer, Harmon, Jackson, Tillman, Kiowa, and Comanche are all under a flood watch as of right this second. Got it? All right, cool. What else we got going on today? Oh, I just want to share this for you before we got in hot and heavy into some conversations with Joe and Boots. Uh, it went away. Let me, here it is. Tonight, the Cordell FFA is going to be having their labor auction. The meals, calf fries, brisket, sides, dessert, live auction, a silent auction, some student projects, some donations, just good old fellowship, food, and a fundraiser at the Worstall County Activity Center. Starts at 7 o'clock, and yep, it is tonight. If you got any question, you might contact the Ag. Instructor at 580-917-0689. It's pretty simple. Just show up at the Worstall County Activity Center tonight with your billfold and a big appetite. Spend some money. That's all you need to do. Help out the local FFA. Anyway, that's at Cordell. So, all right. Let's go ahead and take a Oklahoma Farm Bureau break. Brought to you by the Roger Mills County Farm Bureau. We will be right back. After this, the day in ag with Jimmy Clark. The, the biggest mistake I've seen when people are purchasing insurance or coming in to visit with us is being underinsured. You know, the state minimum on auto insurance is 25,000, 50,000. 
and that's too low. I mean, if you run into somebody's new vehicle and it costs fifty thousand dollars, and you only have twenty five thousand in coverage, that's going to come out of your pocket. So you know, we try to make sure that our our customers are insured how they need to be to to get the coverage. I mean, if you're going to have insurance, you need to have it for the right reasons, and that's to protect themselves. I mean, that's why they have it. I'm really in the business of protecting the customer. When it comes to protection, it's not a large amount more to go ahead and get the coverage you need. Life insurance and annuity products offered through Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company. Property and casualty products are offered through Oklahoma Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance and affiliated companies. Hi, I'm Mickey Lively. I'm an insurance agent with Oklahoma Farm Bureau. My office is located in Greer County. Call me anytime at 580-782-3827. Do you love the great outdoors? Maybe you enjoy trap shooting or skeet shooting, or maybe getting some target practice in at the firing range is your thing. If you're that person, you love guns. Holbert Farm and Garden has a whole room dedicated to guns, gun safes, ammunition, and more. It's quite impressive. You got to go check it out. They are Western Oklahoma's platinum browning dealer and Glock stocking dealer. They're located at 1030 South Monroe in Hobart, Oklahoma. If they don't have it, you don't need it. Hobart Farm and Garden. It helps to work with someone who's been down the same road you're traveling. Someone who knows what you're up against and what you're going through. When it comes to farmers and ranchers, that's us. That's who we are. Our lenders know ag inside and out because we're producers too. We approach it like a partnership. We want to put ag producers in position to be successful. We're very laid back and easy to deal with. And people seem to like that. We think you'll like it too. I'm Marty Maddox. Great Plains Bank in Elk City is here to lend farmers and ranchers a helping hand. Member FDIC. Hey, farmers and ranchers, it's time to make your life easier with an easy haul hay trailer from Everett's Welding in Visay, Oklahoma. These trailers are designed to haul multiple hay bales as quickly and efficiently as possible, keeping more money in your pocket. It'll pay for itself over time and make your life easier. What a deal. See all they have to offer at everettwelding.com. Be sure and check out their ads in the Penny News. A bolt breaks on a spring tooth, a hair, or a chisel. Your work in the field stops. Most people have two choices. Either use belling wire as a temporary fix or drive 15 miles into town. There's a third option that'll get you back to work in only a few minutes. We'll bring a bolt bin to your place and we'll keep it stocked for you. Camrock Supply. It's on South Main in Elk City next to Fred's Steakhouse. The website is camrocksupply.com. Staying supplied keeps you in the field getting your work done. When it comes time to put your hard-earned money toward a new vehicle, count on Lipscomb dealerships to give you a better value and car buying experience with friendly, no-pressure sales and quality service backed by a half century of experience. Save more in the country at our seven dealerships across Texoma with over 1,000 Chevy, Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Ford vehicles, plus KTMs and can always on sale at LipscombDealerships.com. Good people, great deals, family-owned since 1979. Jim is all wound up and ready to go. Here comes more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Oh, boy. We're going to hear some stories today. I can already tell. <laughs> All right, let's check out your weather in northwestern Oklahoma. Uh, slap out, 51 degrees. Dew points, 45. The humidity is 81. The winds are out of the east, northeast at 16 miles an hour with a wind gust up to 22. 10-day uh, rain total, 1.55 inches of rain. Three-day average four-inch bare soil temperature, 54 degrees. And sunsets at 50. 539, 40% chance of rain showers today in 53, tonight 41 for low and rain showers 90%. Tomorrow, 100% chance of rain showers in 51 degrees with northeast to east winds 15 to 21 miles an hour. All right, I got a text earlier from one of my listeners. He was driving down a blacktop road out in the country. Guess it. We're going to have to school you guys again this winter. In front of him, laying on the asphalt, was a big old ball of wrap from a hay bale. Come on, guys. We can do better than that. Secure your loads on your vehicles. And if matter of fact, I think they got a deal going on the uh, catch-alls, and you can buy them here in Ray, at Ray's uh, Boot and Saddle Repair down here in Elk City. Or you can order them. I think you can order them online. I'll get more information on that. But if you buy one of those catch-alls, it automatically signs you up to win. Uh, not to win, but for a drawing for a pair of tickets to go see uh, 
cross Canadian ragweed in Stillwater. How about that? That'd be worth it. And that catch all works good. I got mine out last night and washed it. It's drying today, so it's getting ready to come on. Matter of fact, our R eights that reported this in the road said that he's fed four bales of hay only and he's dumped his catch all twice. And that ain't because of the rap from his hay. He's picking it up after people. So you guys be Please, the county and the state would really appreciate it. So, anyway, well, in the studio with me right now he is Mr. Joe Merrick. Mr. Joe, how are you? I'm good, Jimmy. How are you? Oh, I'm good. You came on last week. I miss you so much. I wanted you to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Glad well, somebody does. <laughs> well, you know, you get it is what it is. You don't get a cowboy in the studio every now and then. We got Boots coming on here in about 10 minutes. Yeah, we, you and I were just laughing. I, he's I, not happy. Well, he's good. It's just He's just a cowboy and lives by his own time. But we called. I called down there to make sure he was ready for our 1230 call. And he said, well, if you don't mind, I just sat down at the Chuck Shack here for a big old meal. He said, can you put it off about 20 minutes? <laughs> I said, no. I don't know. I imagine Jimmy probably needs to call you at twelve thirty. So, well, okay, I'll get. I'll hurry then. <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. Hey, I was. We were speaking of that anyway. Uh, you were telling me about that. You've ate there. It, uh, that must be pretty cool. It is. Yeah, it's quite a deal. There's a lot of, a lot of history in that ranch, of course, and, and, it's kind of funny now that it's changed hands and stuff. And and Boots told me when I was talking to him the other day that he said I have to be kind of careful talking about the four sixes and this and that and other because of the rights to it and all that stuff. Now right. he never used to have to worry about right. it before. But I don't think it's an issue for him. But but it's just funny how the world changes and time marches on for guys even even like Boots aren't insulated from it. But, right. but uh, I mentioned to you off the air, uh, yeah. uh, he, he was telling me one time they have two uh, cook shacks down there, one on the south side of the road for the horse outfit and one on the north side of the highway that goes from Guthrie to Lubbock on the, uh, for the, for the cow outfit. And Miss Ann, back when she was there and before they sold the place, they were having a little trouble with crossover. Some of the guys were going to one place and, and belonged on the other place. And it was no big deal, except it was hard for the cooks to know how much to fix. So she asked them all to, for the horse guys to eat on the horse side of the road and the cowboys to eat on the north, north side. And, and she said, and Boots can eat wherever he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, they, so what's the difference down there between the horse guys and the cowboys? There's probably not much difference in the guys. It's just their job description. There's, they have a huge horse operation down there. Right. Stand a lot of studs and have mares and halt to break colts all day and break colts. And that, and that's a set of guys that work on them. And then the north side of the road is all the cowboys uh, for the yeah, cattle, the, all the cattle outfit that they've got right. to take care of. I bet they, I wonder how many full-time vets they got there. I don't think they have but one full-time one. Okay. But, uh, they probably bring some in now and then for occasions. But um, back when Dr. Blodgett was there, he was there for a long time. He, he ran the, the horse outfit, but he was also their, their vet. And, uh, now then, I don't. I haven't met the fellow that's the vet down there now. Right. All right. Well, I, I met the lady vet on Yellowstone. <laughs> I he don't did. know if that was real or not. <laughs> that's the one. That's when Jimmy showed up down there. Oh yeah. 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 Not me, but the, yeah, the other but Jimmy. the but the uh, want to be bronc rider yeah. from Yellowstone when he showed up down there. So anyway, well, we got a few minutes and let's talk uh, again about the inaugural Cattleman's Ball because this is going to be a a really, really awesome thing for uh, Western Oklahoma, especially Sayre. But it's the uh, inaugural Cattleman's Ball, and uh, the theme this year is honoring the rich heritage of the cattle industry and its impact on life in Western Oklahoma and the Eastern Tex Texas Panhandle. And it's coming up November 16th. And t talk a little bit more about it. Well, we just we felt like it was, um, and it's not just for Sayre. You're right. It's for that whole uh geographic area there and all the all the communities that it represents it's a uh, the cattle business is huge in our part of the country as you know and uh, it doesn't matter what business you're in, in in town the the plus or minus side of the cattle business affects you and and everybody uh, whether you sell tires or pickups or feed or anything else uh, your your business is affected by how your customers who are a lot of them are cattlemen are doing. oh yeah and and uh, we just want to have a night uh, once a year that everybody can come and celebrate that business and enjoy a steak dinner and some entertainment and have a good dance and have fun and and uh, 
Yeah, because yeah. your entertainment coming, that's a rarity for him to be in this area, yeah. isn't uh, it? Jay Cooker, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's in the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame, plays all over the world, and and uh, just really well-known dance band and, and a cowboy himself. And uh, yeah, right. he'll be a lot of fun, and we're lucky to have him and – and then, uh, and then to visit with Boots too. It'll just be a fun night and and a night to celebrate our Western heritage and our cowboy culture. Right. And this also helps raise money for uh, the Dust Bowl uh, Days Farm and Ranch Festival that comes up during the summer, which is really starting, starting to, to it's yeah. starting to grow. I yeah. mean, we just wanted to this establish year something. Four? It'll be our fourth year. Well, I, it may be the fifth actually. We started kind of small the first year, but okay. maybe the fourth main year. Right. And, and, again, we just want to, to celebrate our, our cow, cow, cowboy culture and farm and ranch culture here in this part of the country and, and uh, gain some notoriety for us and bring some other people in from off the highway and r- urban areas and let them show, show them what it's like to be out here and, and just capitalize on what we take for granted all the time. Right. And it's $100 a person, but it, it's, it's, it sounds expensive, but it's really not because you're going to get a steak dinner uh, catered by the Nightlingers. Night yeah, that's that's, that, that's worth the hundred bucks by itself, and you get to have a conversation, just co- a cozy one, as it says here, with uh, Boots O'Neill and Joe Merrick, and then the silent auction, and then because that silent auction, I spent a little bit more in my pocket. Yeah, we appreciate that. If you want to donate that book back, we'll sell it again, Jimmy. If you want. Only if it brings two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, it's going to be two thousand or nothing. Anyway, I bought that book, and man, that was a great book. Well, I appreciate it from uh, that you wrote. And then, uh, and then, of course, Jake Hooker and the Outsiders will be there. This all starts at six o'clock. Uh, uh, steak dinner and Cattleman's Ball, and it'll be at the uh, Beckham County uh, Activity Center right mm-hmm. there next to Courthouse. You can't get lost coming to that, to that Sarah, center. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you, don't wait around because we're limited on the seating there in the in the steak part of it, and right. we only have room for a hundred and so. And and we're getting a lot of calls and people are coming in, so don't wait around. If you get a chance to order them online, do so, or find one of us and and just buy them or right. Uh, yeah, because the easiest place is on the Dust Bowls Days Farm and Ranch Festival Facebook right, page. Facebook or page. call one of you, UK, exactly. or right, right. and all the deals there. But if you can't make the steak dinner and you want to come dance, that's $25 a person, uh, and that'll be at 8 o'clock. And that'll be when the yeah, ball's probably over. Is, right. And and we want to invite everybody to come to the dance. And the 12 or 18 and under kids are, tw- are 15 I think. Is yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. Fifteen and, bucks yeah. for eighteen and under. And I didn't. You didn't hear it from me. But if your kids are under twelve, they, sneak them in. Just come on. We want you there. Have a good time. Yeah. See there. See you guys learned something today. Anyway, uh, they can be purchased online. And so, uh, the, like I said, just follow the link on the Dust Bowl Days Festival Facebook page, and that's pretty easy because. I'm kind of getting all excited. Boots is coming on here. This this ought to be comical. <laughs> We're having you and him and me together. Probably ain't a good thing. It's probably not. <laughs> so anyway, we got uh, to. So we're going to go ahead and take an Oklahoma Farm Bureau break. Brought to you by the Roger Mills County Farm Bureau. And when we come back, we'll see if Boots is done eating lunch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll be right back after this. Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. Kent Watkins here, owner of SEI Agritech in Elk City. As you know, feeding your cattle the proper feed and supplements during cold winter weather is critical. We offer everything your cattle need to help manage stress and increase the energy they need during the cold weather. Range Max Cattle Cubes and Maxi Gain are great for that. We offer them in bulk or by the bag. We also do winter contracts anytime. Call or come by today and make sure your cattle stay in top shape this winter. SEI Agritech on South Randall in Elk City. We do a ton of wholesale work with your mechanic shops, but it's also the DIY guy that has Saturday afternoon off. He comes in Saturday morning, picks up his stuff, and, and works on his pickup. It's a wide range of people. It can vary from the biggest shop in town to the smallest shop in town to your guy that works in his garage on the weekend. We try our best not to tell the customer no, but to find what they need. Napa Auto Parts of Elk City, 716 West 3rd. More parts for more cars. Harvest equipment tires need to hold up to long hours, different soil conditions, and lots of road time. Firestone Harvest tires are built to keep up. They offer better traction, less soil compaction, better fuel use, and they're puncture resistant. 
Blair Tire and Feed keeps a bunch of Firestone Harvest tires in stock. Their inventory is huge. And when you need infield service, they guarantee to get there. If you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, they'll find you and get you moving again. Blair Tire and Feed at Highway 283 and 19 in Blair, Oklahoma. Ulta Beauty's 21 Days of Beauty event is back. From now until September 19th, score over 200 daily beauty steals at 50% off in every category. And check Ulta.com daily to get them all before they're gone. Take 50% off bestsellers from brands like Estee Lauder and Supergoop. Plus, say hello to new finds from brands like Dyson and Sol de Janeiro. And Ilia is now at Ulta Beauty in select stores and online. Shop in-store at Ulta.com or try pickup today. Ulta Beauty, the Possibilities are beautiful. Conditions apply while supplies last. It's known as the thief in the night. A lack of cattle mineral can lead to decreased weaning weights, small, weak calves, and severely compromised health. Don't let a gap in your feeding program rob your herd's performance. Stop by Farmers Union Co-op in Elk City and pick up a bag of Purina Wind and Rainstorm Mineral today. Farmers Union Co-op of Elk City is your authorized Purina dealer. This is the Western Oklahoma Livestock Auction Market Report for Monday, November 4th. 479 head were sold. Four head of steers at 356 brought 334. 15 at 502 brought 278. 6 at 584 brought 238. 20 at 597 brought 248. 10 at 626 brought 264, 11 at 627 brought 239, 67 at 837 brought 240, 6 head of heifers at 329 brought 280, 18 at 431 brought 283, 7 at 489 brought 233, 12 at 508 brought 248, 11 at 622 brought 235, 65 at 798 brought 227.50, 10 at 876 brought 216, butcher cows were 109 to 135, butcher bulls brought 80 to 149 western oklahoma livestock auction exit 71 clinton oklahoma sale every monday at 10 a.m to consign call brandon hickey 580-497-6095 he loves talking about farming and ranching here's more of today in ag with jimmy clark all right welcome back we got mr boots o'neill on the line with us mr o'neill thanks you so much for coming on the show today I'm glad to do it. I'm honored to be involved. I had a good time when I was involved with the Mercs. Well, uh, we appreciate it. And I'm sorry your lunch was so short. <laughs> so... I, that's all right. It's not going to hurt me to miss one. Uh, yeah, but they, uh, uh, what were you having today? What were you... uh, I, I think it was just, uh Chili and beans and some salad stuff and things like that. Some of that Little he- beef. Some of that healthy we stuff. We eat a lot of beef. We have to. They tell us we can have chicken about once a month, but we <laughs> buy chicken and raise beef. So. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, uh, again, thank you for coming on today in Ag with me and Joe here. And uh, the second thing is, and most important is, I, I want to thank you uh, for your service. Uh, in the military, uh, we. I, oh yes, I appreciate. It. I didn't know you'd been in the service till yesterday. I was reading your your bio, and you was in the army for two years in Korea. So, uh, and that that important day, Veterans Day, is coming up next week. So, thank you very much for your service. Well, I appreciate that, and uh, it was a uh, a long time ago. But I I went to Korea in '53, I think it was, and. Uh, it was a uh, pretty, pretty tough duty, but, uh, made it all right. Yeah. You're here. You do. You're, uh, you're down on the four sixes. So, uh, a f- short question before we get into a serious conversation with you, if there is such a thing with me and Joe in here, but anyway, uh, yesterday y- you were, uh, gathering saddle horses. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you told me. Yeah, I, you told me about that that horse you had that got a little chargey when you was getting them horses boots. Tell, <laughs> tell everybody. Yeah, about I, that. that happens. Uh, <laughs> people, a uh, uh, horse that's just a good solid saddle horse that you can rope and punch cows and do everything. But I was driving about fifty of them saddle horses along, and they just 
throwed their tail over their back and left there, and he wanted to go with them. <laughs> and you did? And I had trouble negotiating it. We were going to have to t- trot behind them for a while. But uh, when I got to the corral, that's when Joe called me. I could laid my reins over the saddle horn, sat there on the phone, talked to him, and him just standing there. But he had caught up with them then. And, <laughs> so and, we, uh, we, Joe's familiar with that sort of thing because they handled a lot of horses and they have seen some of them that you, you're surprised, really, that <laughs> he just really, I, I thought I was putting a lot of, 75 years of skill in there from negotiating that coming in with him because he was, he was really having a fit but I was hoping it didn't get worse than it did but I made it tell tell the, the listeners uh, about that little little pin you've got for a horse trap well it it it's uh, Four miles to the back side of it <laughs> from the crail here. So, uh, wow. And you can, I tell people sometimes you can leave here and run and get the horses, and you've rode 10 or 11 miles when you get <laughs> back. The horses. Well, uh, <laughs> keeps the bow in your legs. <laughs> well, most good cowboys are bow legged. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so from uh, what I from what I see. So when did you show up out here in western Oklahoma on the Merrick Ranch? You remember? Uh I think it was in A eighty six. I had been with Wagner's for twenty five years and left and was in a kind of a period before I had located and uh, Bob Thompson was working for him and he uh, called me and we grew up together and and uh, he called me and wanted me to go to New Mexico with them to work a ranch out there above Rio Dosa. and so I just met him in Roswell and left my car there and put my bed and saddle in the, their rig and went with them and then <clears throat> is that worked in out good for us because they were satisfied and I was too and so we made a trade then to move to the Red Rock Ranch there at uh, between Cheyenne and Elk City. Right. How many years was you there? Four or five years, Boots? I couldn't remember when I was thinking back. On I think it was between three and four. Like okay. a little bit in four years right. and uh uh, enjoyed it, really liked the place. They done a lot of work on the house, Walter did, and fixed it up where my wife was pleased with it. And uh, uh, we we were pretty well settled there. And then and Walt just told us, you know, that they were shutting a lot of things down, and he wanted me to be sure and. If I had a place to go or something come up to take it in case that the, they sold that and it and it terminated the job, and so from then on I kind of went to looking around and uh, wound up a year or so after that here to four sixes, and I've been here thirty five years now. And, well, you, you told me you're just going to go up there for a couple years or something for them, and you've been there 35. Is that what you said? Yeah, I told told them when I took the job. They had a, they I had been a a brand inspector here in Texas years before, and had a, a special Texas Ranger commission for Peace Officer Authority, and and had had pretty good luck and got along good with them and and they uh, really liked me but I just wanted to work for a cow outfit I, I would when I'd be somewhere inspecting a bunch of cattle at brands that they were loading and the, the men trotted off after that and headed back to the wagon or I'd 
get in that car and drive off, and I'd think, you know, I'd rather be going with them <laughs> than doing this. So I just went back to work for a riot shortly after that, and then uh, worked several years, worked up to the foreman there at Wagner's for several years, and there toward the end, they were wanting to do some things and make some changes, and some of them, you know, I'm like the old fellow that will tell you that he's seen a lot of changes in his life, and he's been against every one of them, so. <laughs> uh, uh, that's funny. How many episodes of Yellowstone have you been on? Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't even think about it. I've been on any, but I hear people call and tell me I just stuff here at the ranch and they'll take a picture or have us to do some little something and uh, but I don't really know uh, two or three times they'll have the wagon set up here filming when they're filming something and uh, they uh, Mr. Sheridan uh, um, Taylor is in charge of that and he's been uh, awful good to us cowboys here and uh, hadn't interfered with our way of life and uh, much or made any changes. And, you know, this ranch belonged to one family for 150 years and then it sold and the, the people that bought it, I think there's several in it. I don't even know. I have no association with them and but Taylor Sheridan comes out here a lot, and, and he rides a horse good and, and, ride, and rides some good horses. All the horses I've seen him own, and then some of the horses they used in the scenes that I've been in, some of them were movie horses, but they were good, real good. I'm used to them movies, and old horse that they'll pull one rein around and or ride up and get off and drop the reins and go in, you know, and you don't do that on a ranch horse. <laughs> and, Why not? Uh, but because <laughs> you'd be afoot when you come back out. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, uh, no. but he's been real good for us, and uh, no. I. Uh, I'm amazed that they keep me, to tell you, I'm honest about that, because, you know, I, I still carry a flip phone, and I don't text and uh, all that, but uh, they made me and got me a email number, and I have to keep it wrote down on a piece of paper in my billfold, because I don't know what it is right now, but I said I had to have one now, and... Uh, so do you even know how to read your emails on your flip phone yet? No, no, no. <laughs> and I, I, I really, uh, I'm embarrassed about my phone knowledge. All I'll use it for is to make calls and get calls and use the directory. But uh, I'm kind of. I have you, trouble trying to put a number in them or anything like that. And then my daughter tells me that I've had two or three jobs like that brand inspector job and I would travel the state and, uh, testified in court and before grand juries and stuff she says I know you can learn to operate a smartphone she got me one and give it to me but uh, every time I wanted to use it it'd be in airplane mode or something <laughs> and I couldn't get it to so I give it to a lady here to give to her grandkids and, and went back and got flip phone and I'm talking on it right now. Well, I, I want I want you to let you know something. Don't be embarrassed by it, that flip phone or the email deal because I can count on both hands and maybe a few of my toes buddies around here that's got flip phones. So you're not the only one. <laughs> well, <up>. good. Uh, <laughs> What, you know, you can carry it, this flip phone, you can carry it in your shop pocket or anything, and them boys carrying them big smartphones have to have a special deal or something to carry them, you know. And uh, 
This thing, I can carry it in my shop pocket and don't need it just like a sack of bull durham or something. <laughs> and, you know, it's no problem, but I need to improve a little on it, I think. Nah, but, you're uh, all right. You're all right. And then, are you excited <laughs> about coming to Sarah next Saturday? Yes, I, I look forward to it. First of all, I look forward to seeing Joe and his family. I had a good relationship with them when we were there, and I, I uh, thought a lot of Walt. He he was uh, uh, real good to me there, and the time or two I done some little something there that, you know, was messed them up a little on some of their thinking over there, but he never did. He just left that up to me and uh and never uh never did talk to me about being unhappy about anything and so we had a good good relationship. Folks will get a kick out of this. We we had a lot of places in those days a few here in western Oklahoma, one in the Panhandle, one in Kansas and two in New Mexico and one in the Texas Panhandle. And what was it you called our outfit boots? Do you remember? Well, I, I can't think right now. I think, what, I what think you call it? it the Badly Scattered Cattle Company. <laughs> <laughs> badly Scattered Cattle Company. Yeah, we was. And we'd go from one of them places to the other one and, and haul a load of horses and bedrolls. And sometimes we'd have a cook there and sometimes we'd batch yeah. but uh, we uh, had a good working and we had some good fellers Joe was young then and uh, I guess he still is <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, Bob Thompson and Bob Elliott and them boys were good cowboys yeah, and good Price, people yeah. Dave Price Mike Luckett. Mike, Mike Luckett and yeah. Mike was a stayed with me a lot and we got to be pretty good friends and still correspond some well you and bob but, thompson that's two names that about anybody that knows anything at all about cowboy and they know those two names <laughs> well, I, well that's I, no joke i appreciate that it amazes me uh I met a fellow this morning over at the horse barn from Missouri, and he's come here looking at some horses and some stuff, but he said one of the highlights of it, and he told his wife coming out here, he hoped he got to met Boots, and I thought, I don't know how he'd even know, but, you know, but but we took the picture together. Well... But, well, it was because of your uh, appearance on basically because everybody knows you as a good cowboy, but then Yellowstone just took it a step further because did you get to meet Jimmy, the one that acts as Jimmy on Yellowstone? I know you talked to him on that one episode, but did you get to talk to him off the air, off the set? I, I really, I, I, I don't remember much about any of them. I, you know, I, a couple of years ago, I was a, a judge at, at that World Championship Ranch Rodeo in Amarillo yeah. and did some stuff for them. And when we picked the champion horse for that deal, we was going to take a pair of bits out there and present them to that boy riding him in the arena, and they had the television set up and there was a gentleman standing there with a beard and he said can I go out there with you and I said well I don't care <laughs> and he did and my daughters and some of them at Vernon this was in Amarillo was watching it and they was all hollering that he's with this he's one of the stars on Yellowstone but uh Larry, my daughter, told them people said, I'll bet you when I talk to Dad, he don't have any idea who that guy was. And, <laughs> I wonder who it was, Kip? And, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, uh, I should have because they'd been here and they'd been here. And they'd camp here and stay here a while and worked around them. But 
I, I just thought he's somebody standing there wanting to walk out there and present them bits, so I told him to come on. And, come on. <laughs> yeah. So do you guys, up there at the Yellowstone, they got a place they call the train station, so does the four sixes, do you guys got a train station down there? I, I, don't, I don't know where it is, but we they they – they have a lot of people here when they're filming. You know, we've got about 200 adults in this county, and the only business in the county is the 4-6 Supply House. You can't buy a hamburger in King County. But when they come in, they'll have two or three mess halls, tents that's set up, and they'll be two or three camps of people in trailers and stuff, and they'll be more than the population of the county <laughs> involved in that for two or three weeks. But they all really have been good to us, and uh, and we go right on with general rights work when they're uh, here, and uh, there's no, no interference, and... Uh, Taylor sometimes goes with us horseback when we're around in pastures and stuff. Yeah, he's a pretty good, but, from what I've seen, he's a really good guy. Yeah, he really has got his, got his head on pretty straight, I think, for where, you know, having the, the success he's had in life. And, yep. uh, yeah, he's a, he's a but, pretty uh, good guy. And straightforward, uh, yeah. it seems like. He's been uh, really good to me. He uh, gave me a a real good gift for my 91st birthday. Uh, gave me a flyer stamp saddle. And then for my 90th birthday, well, he set tent up there and had a, built a dance floor and had Jake Hooker come out and and they knew that Jake starts playing at 9 and quits at 12 or 1. He told him he'd have to start and quit at 7 and quit at 10 or boots would go to bed. <laughs> so uh, he did, and we had two or three-hour dance with Jake Hooker. So he's been real generous about things like that. And I have really have been concerned that they'd want to get rid of me. I, I've never heard of anybody holding a job punching cows. It's my age. And, uh, uh, you know, I've had a job riding a horse for a living 77 years this this winter. Man. And uh, that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. I went to work. I'd worked a year or two just as a kid before that, but I went on study payroll in 49 at the J.A.'s, and I've had a job. I've never been let go, and I've never uh, been out of work or drawn uh, unemployment or anything like that. That's why and they're I, keeping you on. You've been on so long they can't afford your unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't want didn't want to have to pay that, did they? Yeah, well, they uh, they've got a big old green tractor here with them forks in front that the men put hay in these racks for the horses. Yeah, we don't we don't feed any hay out in the pastures or anything. But I told Joe Leathers, he's the general manager, that uh, I'd like to learn how to drive that big green tractor and put. Hay out for the horses. And he stood there a minute and said, Well, Boots, there's enough people around here to put the hay out without <laughs> you having to do it. And there's enough, enough stuff tore up with, <clears throat> without you learning to drive a tractor. <laughs> uh, well, so well, I never have got to drive it yet. Well, but, Mr. O'Neill, we got a word. We're running out of time here, and I can't wait to meet you in person. I think I really have, but at least see you next uh, Saturday night at the inaugural Cattleman's Ball over at Sayre. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 
plan on being there and I look forward to seeing you and uh, I appreciate you calling me and giving me this opportunity. Well, thanks for taking away from your lunch. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Tell, uh, tell Joe, uh, uh, I wish we still had old strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear about uh, this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye bye. Wow. We need about a, like a five hour right. show with you and him. And so, anyway, that's awesome. Well, Joe, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, and anyway, we're going to take a break. We come back. I might have time for the Hobart Farm and Garden <laughs> weather. We'll be right back. The Day in Ag with Jimmy Clark. When you get off work, how do you feel on your drive home? Everybody's glad to head home after 8 or 10 or 12 hours on the job. But do you feel like you and the crew did good work and made things happen and helped move a project forward? Or are you just thankful it's over and you don't want to think about it at all? Nobody should feel that way. At Canyon, you won't. Canyon Oilfield Services is hiring day and night drivers for their Fay, Hinton, and Chickasha locations. And they need mechanics in Elk City and Fay. Excellent pay and full benefits will be yours. Apply at Canyon's Elk City office on Highway 6, a mile and a half south of the golf course. Or go online to canyonoilfield.com. You can even call 729-3297. When your shift is done at Canyon, you'll know you've done good work. And when you go back, you'll do even more. At Canyon Oilfield Services, the key word is service. Ulta Beauty's 21 Days of Beauty event is back. From now until September 19th, score over 200 daily beauty steals at 50% off in every category. And check Ulta.com daily to get them all before they're gone. Take 50% off bestsellers from brands like Estee Lauder and Supergoop. Plus, say hello to new finds from brands like Dyson and Sol de Janeiro. And Ilya is now at Ulta Beauty in select stores and online. Shop in-store at Ulta.com or try pickup today. Ulta Beauty. The possibilities are beautiful. Conditions apply while supplies last. Usually the victim is doubled over with abdominal pain, but not this time. This time was a little different. The poor guy couldn't stop throwing up. It was Wednesday night, and it got so bad he went to the ER. Turns out he had kidney stones. On Thursday, he saw Aaron Doherty at Urology Associates Western Oklahoma. On Friday, Dr. Cole Wooten performed surgery. And just like that, the suffering stopped. Nearly one out of every nine adults will go through the pain of having kidney stones. It's a miserable condition to suffer through. If it happens to you, it's not a statistic. It's a painful fact. You want prompt assessment and prompt treatment. That's what Dr. Cole Wooten and urological nurse practitioners Tracy Lane and Aaron Doherty provide. On Facebook, search Urology Associates Western Oklahoma. The office is in Elk City at 522 North Main. When you're suffering, you want relief sooner not later. It's important to keep your irrigation machines up and running during the growing season because when your crops need water, they can't wait. And when you need parts, there's no substitute for the best. Valley Genuine Parts. From gaskets and gearboxes to booster pumps and boom bags, Valley Genuine Parts make all the difference to your operation. Contact your local Valley dealer, Knudsen Irrigation, 1-800-373-9325. For all your irrigation parts, technology, and service needs, or online at knutsonirrigation.com. Anything you can get out and about and do in, in the public to keep yourself out there, seeing what's going on, and you're knowledgeable about what's going on. And you have customers come in wanting to do something, open a business or whatnot. It might be nice to have a little insight on your side. They have business plans. It's probably rare to find a business plan that has every little in and out thought out. So if you know what's going on around town, there may be something you could share with them that might either alter their plan Make their plan a different direction, speed it up, slow it down. I'm Utah Robinson, and I help make the difference. First National Bank and Trust of Elk City and Sayre. Member FDIC. Oh, Jimmy's all wound up and ready to go. Here comes more of Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark. All right, I got just a minute here. Here's your Hobart Farm and Garden Ag Weather Update for Southwestern Oklahoma. FYI. Down there at Hobart Farm and Garden, they actually have the catch-alls down there to put on your truck to put your net and stuff in. Just I'll cover that more often later. 60 degrees at Hobart, 
53 is the dew point, 79 is the humidity. The winds are out of the northeast at 20 miles an hour. 5.17 inches of rain in the last 10 days. Sunset at 537, three-day average four-inch bare soil. Temperature 60 degrees. 40% chance of rain showers today. <clears throat> Excuse me, 64 for a high. 90% chance of rain showers tonight, 54 low. Tomorrow, 100% chance of rain showers and 64 for a high man what a great opportunity that was thank you joe merrick for getting boots on that was uh that was special for me that was a good show with boots and i just love listening to the uh old timers like that it, you know those days are just it's pretty just it, just it was awesome so anyway he'd be there saturday night at the beckham county activity center next week for the inaugural cattleman's ball so anyway See you guys tomorrow. It's Today in Ag with Jimmy Clark, brought to you by the First National Bank and Trust of Sarah in Elk City, Oklahoma. God bless.